January was a month where my patients got rewarded. What does that mean? You'll find out. You'll also find out the bottles I got, how much I paid for them, how I got them, and quickly becoming a lot of people's favorite, the bottles I passed up on. Let's find out what they are. Okay. Oh yeah. Welcome to Whisk Pink. My name is David. And dry January is a great and healthy practice for many that need a reset from the holiday season or just, you know, control their drinking. Well, not for this guy. That just means more whiskey for me. <laughs> so let's get right to it. The bottles I passed up on first is going to be the Old Fitzgerald 8 year bundle that came with two large and small batches, one Elijah Craig small batch for a total of $230 at Natty's Liquor Store in Costa Mesa. I mean, if you think about it, the three small batches are like $80 to $90. And so that ends up being like $140 or $150 for the, um, the old Fitzgerald 8. And that's very close to MSRP. And I don't, I never had a bottle of old Fitzgerald. So I really wanted it, but I heard the reviews or I read the reviews and it's just not very compelling. It's, it tastes a little young. Um, it, it's not that sweet. Uh, a lot of people had like mixed reviews. And so, you know what? I would love to have the decanter. I love to have the bottle, but I didn't need the other three bottles. And um, I didn't want to spend, I guess, 250 out the door. So I passed up on it. So next bottle I passed up on, Frank August Case Study 2 PX Brandy Finished coming in at $175 at Total Wine & More Laguna Hills. It was an easy pass. I don't really like Frank August that much. And Brandy Finish? I mean, from the reviews I read, it's just sweet and it's a lot of brandy, but you don't get much. And so, I mean, for $175, it's that's Fourgate, almost old Carter territory. I mean, that was an easy pass at that price. The next three bottles that I passed up on were all in the same place, all on the same day. So the first one's going to be Angel's Envy Cash Drink Bourbon coming in at $230. The Peerless High Rye Bourbon coming in at $155. And the Yellowstone 2023 Limited Edition Fujaki finished at $140. All that total wine and more in Brea. I mean, you could say I was lucky to run into all three at the same day, but I passed up on it. it it's It was too expensive. I mean, the Angels with MBA Cash Strength, I passed up on in December and I did it again in January. Um, I just don't like anything Angel's Envy. I haven't had a pour of it yet, unfortunately, so I can't judge for myself if it was worth 230 plus tax. Same thing with the Peeler's High Rye. Never had it before, 150 55 plus tax. What I'm saying is it was just too expensive. So passed up on that. And then the Yellowstone, I tried their 2022 Limited. Wasn't that impressed. It was okay. It still it wasn't worth $140 plus tax, so... Those three were kind of easy passes, even though it was kind of cool to see all three at the same day, at the same place, at the same time. So next bottle I passed up on is going to be the High West Single Barrel Midwinter's Ruby Port Finished at High Times in Costa Mesa for $100. Basically, the Midwinter Night Dram in a single barrel version. And it's half the price of the Midwinter Night Dram, basically. I mean, here I can see it about $200. So is it worth a try? most likely but as you can see a pattern i'm not really a finished whiskey person especially a bourbon or a rye if maybe i had a chance to try it it would be great but i don't i don't think high times actually lets you try a bottle or try their store picks not that i know of. maybe they do um if any of you guys know uh comment but um yeah so i passed up on it maybe i regret it but right now i have 100 extra dollars and the last bottle i passed up on Wild Turkey Generations at $500 at High Proof Liquor up in Fort. Just too expensive. I, I mean, I, pe I did pass up on this in November. It was a pre-sale for $450 at Reserve Bar in partnership with Wild Turkey. But that one was easy to pass up on because there was no reviews. Uh, no, one, you know, no one knew how good or bad it was. But now I know how good it is. It's actually on a lot of people's Whiskey of the Year list, almost number one, top three, top five. And so... It's a great bottle, but 500 plus tax, just couldn't do it, so passed. All right, let's get on to some good news. So the bottles I was able to get. The first two bottles, it's actually single malt. <sighs> All right, I don't know if that head's gonna be very good looking, but hey, hopefully it turns out well. So the first bottle is gonna be Daft Mill, summer batch release from 2009, 
and it is a single farmer state lowland single malt scotch whiskey coming in at 46 abv or 92 proof now death mill is a farm to bottle distillery just like frame ranch so they grow their own grains pump their own water distill it age it all in one place all in one farm so that's a cool story and the price it's actually regularly 230 dollars here which is very expensive but it was on sale for 120 dollars at can and wines and with assist from devcast who was able to get two bottles at 120 dollars he asked me if i wanted one at cost and with that story i couldn't pass it up the next bottle blue spot i got this one for 110 dollars at a local distillery and this is what a seven years castring non-chill filter coming in at 58.9 ABV or 117.8 proof. I couldn't pass it up on 110. Um, it was a local liquor store here and I visit there very often and they offered to me for 110. They knew I was into single molds or trying to get into single molds and they said, hey, I love Blue Spot. The owner is a you know, single mold enthusiast and he said, I'll give you two for 110. I was like, I couldn't pass it up. Maybe it was dry January and they had an abundance. I'm not really sure. I didn't ask because, uh, you know, asking questions when you're being offered a good price sometimes can get you in trouble. So I took the bottle at 110 and was a happy man. And the next bottle that I was able to get, it's a John J. Bowman single barrel coming in at 100 proof. How much did I pay for this? It was free. It was a gift from one of my subscribers, Danny. Thank you so much, Danny. Viewed one of my videos, we com he commented and I was looking for, I guess I said, I never had a chance to get the, um, the Bardstown single barrel pick from Cypress Craft up in Cypress. And he offered me a sample and we met up to exchange some samples. Once he, we met, we were talking for a little bit and he's like, hey, I have a gift for you. And I thought it would be more samples or something, you know, something light, but got me a whole bottle of the John Jay Bowman. So he actually went to the East Coast, I believe Washington DC for a business trip a couple of days before we met up. And I guess these were very abundant in East Coast. And so he was able to get a couple of bottles and he, decided to give me one. Um, I offered to pay him back the cost for the bottle, but he declined it. And I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys. I love freestyle. <laughs> I am, I'm a human after all, right? So um, I'm not gonna refuse a gift and uh, I'm very appreciative. So thank you so much again. And um, I'm gonna do a review on this. I'm trying to make an interesting idea on how to do a review. I don't wanna just do a review. There's thousands of them, so there's, you know, I don't want to be the next thousand and number one review on John J. Bowman single barrel. So once I think of a good idea and make da Danny proud, I will do a review. If you're enjoying this content, please push that like button. It really helps me out. Also, if you can subscribe, it'll be wonderful because then I can have more excuses to buy more whiskeys. And the next bottle, hey, yeah, it's going to be the Iron Root Harbinger coming in at 115 proof. I got this for $60 at Total Wine and More at Luguna Hills. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know much about this. I just know it's a Texas whiskey and it won 2020 Best Bourbon of the Year at the World Whiskies Award. But I'm just going to be honest. I'm just intrigued by it. I was very, you know, because I like Still Austin. I don't like Balcones. And so I was like, yeah, there's, there must be some other Texas whiskey I could try here at a reasonable cost. And this became it. And for some, some of the small reviews I read, it's actually pretty good. So in the next bottle, it's gonna be the Eagle Rare store pick from Great Press 2, a Great Press number two liquor store in Mission Viejo. I got it for $26. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what I'm doing because I, I, I'm kind of doing stupid things, but it's a store pick Eagle Rare at $26. Even though it's 375, I mean, they did have the 750 for $50, Man, how can you pass up on this little cute little bottle? Oh, I mean, I have plenty of Eagle Rares, but store pick, this little cute thing. Yeah, I like it. So sometimes you just got to do what you got to do and buy cute little Eagle Rares. So next two bottles are the reason I say that patience was rewarded in January for me. It, it, I was able to save some money. But here we go. The next bottle. <laughs> All right, it's going to be the Hardest Creek Jake as well coming in at 17 years, 7 months, and 109 proof. I was able to get this for $180 at Great Press number 2 in Mission Viejo, just like the Eagle Rare. 
Why do I say patience paid off? Most of the time when I saw this, it was at $230. I believe I did see it once at $180 at Cypress Craft, but it sold out before I could buy it. And then so when I saw the Great Press 2 liquor store post up on their Instagram that they had it, I called them, asked them how much it was, $180. Asked them to save me one because I'll be on my way. 15 minutes later, I was on my way home with this bottle for $180 plus tax. You know what? Bourbon Bill gave it a glowing review. He said it was the best at the Hardings Creek so far. And if you think about it, 17 years, 7 months, if you go by that old saying of $10 a year, that's what? $176. I bought it for $180. So it ends up being a very good deal in terms of that sense. And so, and it's supposed to be very good. So I believe I got a good deal. I know as a financial person, I'm supposed to think about the money I spent and not the money I saved because that's a horrible way to manage money. But when it comes to whiskeys and bourbon, that just goes flying out the window. And the next one, and this is the one where I said patience really pays off. <laughs> All right. It's going to be the Four Roses 2023 limited edition, 135th edition for $230 at an AVP store or ever since Vaughn's and Pavilion. I can't say which store because the, the manager has asked me not to say it. Um, I can only say that it's in Orange County. And the reason is because it's causing chaos. I mentioned that I went to a rant in the last month videos. So I'm not going to do it again, but I, unfortunately they asked me not to say it as well. So I can't say it, but you know, I went in, asked nicely. They said, Hey, we have this. Would you like it? I couldn't say yes fast enough, <laughs> obviously. Uh, and so it's, there's three bottles in Stone 23 that I really wanted to get that wasn't beat 10 It was this one, the Maker's Mark Cellar Aged, and the Maker's 10-year-old bourbon. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the Cellar Aged nor the Maker's 10, but now I was able to get this. So I am going to do a review. My first taste of it will be on video. I'm just trying to think of a good idea on how to present it. But, uh, I will do one, and hopefully it's as good as um, I'm expecting to be. Let me know in the comments, which one of these bottles you want me to review. Also, how was your January bottle haul? I replied every single comment, so comment away. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time.